All right. Right now, I'm joined by James Codella, who's a principal product manager on Azure Cosmos DB. Welcome, James. Hey, Leslie. Happy to be here. Great. Happy to have you. So we've got good news and bad news. The good news is, is that we're going to try to do some Q&A, either uh, live in person or via chat. The bad news is, is that we're going to try to do some Q&A. <laughs> so we've got a lot of content that we're going to be talking about that's really cool. We may or may not have time for a lot of it. If we do, that's great. If we don't, don't worry. We've got a go-to link for you to learn more about everything that's new in Azure Cosmos TV. So. Speaking of which, yeah. what are some of your top highlights that are being covered throughout Build right now surrounding Azure Cosmos DB? Yeah, so you may have heard we announced earlier today that we're building the universe's most scalable vector database in Azure Cosmos DB. We announced native vector indexing and search integrated right into the core database. We also announced the preview of the disk ANN index, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. It allows very efficient vector search at high accuracy at any scale. We also have lots of integrations with our favorite uh, large language model orchestrators like Semantic Kernel and Langchain. Sweet. So kind of the elephant in the room here. There are other databases out there that have right. vector-based index searching, right? So what makes Azure Cosmos DBs stand out? Yeah, no, it's a really great question, right? So in Cosmos DB, you can store your data and your vectors together. This eliminates the need of using a separate ve vector database and having to worry about keeping your vectors and your data in sync. Mm. Furthermore, Cosmos DB has a very rich NoSQL query language. You can actually conduct vector searches and filter them based on any existing query filter predicate, ranges, date times, numbers, strings, even spatial indexes. It's very, uh, very diverse, very complete. And then finally, we offer many types of flexible indexing. We have flat or brute force indexing for very precise 100% accuracy. But we also have quantized flat or compressed brute force. And then the disk ANN uh, state-of-the-art vector indexing algorithm that I talked about a minute ago. And then you combine all of this with Azure Cosmos DB and you know, our instant and dynamic auto scale, our, our uh, global replication, our 5.9's SLA, and also announced today the seamless transition from a serverless option to a provision throughput option. So the two combined really give a huge advantage over existing vector databases. Great. And I think the favorite highlight for me in all of that was being able to keep everything in sync with each other without having to remember to update the database or remember exactly. to update the vector piece. Yeah, so exactly. that's keeps really your, nice. Keeps your architectures nice and simple. I agree. So uh, you mentioned um, disk ANN just right. now. So can you talk a little bit about that? What makes it special compared to other vector index types? Yeah, sure. So disk ANN is a suite of advanced algorithms developed at Microsoft Research for uh, very efficient and scalable vector indexing and search. So it all starts with a, you know, you ingest vectors into your database and it compresses the vectors or quantizes the vectors. And those quantized vectors are kept in memory for very efficient access. Mm -hmm. Now the data structure, the graph that powers the search behind disk ANN resides on high speed SSDs that are the backbone of Cosmos DB. These SS, the, uh, the graph index stored on, on the SSD is actually developed using the full precision vectors, so not the compressed vectors. And when you search uh, the graph, the results are actually re-ranked using those full precision vectors. So what this means is that you get incredible computational efficiency by leveraging the compressed vectors in memory, but then you get the full precision of using the full uncompressed vectors that are stored on the SSD. And then again, this is all enabled through a suite of algorithms that were developed at Microsoft Research. Excellent. So, yeah, I, I love that. It's like you're kind of taking the best of multiple worlds without really a lot of the, the cons in terms of like having the precision and right. that especially. So how is disk ANN being used today in the real world? Yeah, so it's used extensively inside Microsoft. So it powers our Bing multimedia search. It also powers Microsoft 365 experiences. Mm -hmm. And so for the first time ever in a Microsoft product, we're bringing disk ANN to you and allowing you to use it on your data at incredible scales. Cool. So I think it's time to do some live coding demos, don't you? All right. Let's talk Let's a take bit. A look. Yeah. See how vector search works in action. Yeah. All right, so uh, to get started here, I have a Jupyter Notebook running, so I'm going to use our Python SDK. Uh, we have a rich set of SDKs uh, for Cosmos DB, as I'm sure you're already aware of, and so we're going to use the Python, a Python one here to do some simple vector search. So 
I'll just go ahead and you know, set up some of my configurations. Uh, and then I have something new here for uh, vector search in Cosmos DB. I have to define a policy of, uh, to tell Cosmos DB where to look in my documents for the vectors. And then I have to define an index, just like I do any other property. And this time, I'm going to define the disk ANN index uh, for this container. I'll set up my connection details. I'll have a helper function here that helps me create embeddings really easily using Azure OpenAI. And then I'll get to the meat of it, this sort of vector search, right? So we're going to be using, so here's my vector search query. We're going to be using a new uh, system function in Cosmos DB called vector distance that executes the vector search for us. Okay. So we can project that as a similarity score in the select statement. Cool. We can actually add a where clause and say that we, don't, we only want to see results that are above a certain similarity score. Right. And then I can order by vector distance. And this is what leverages that powerful disk ANN index. So in this case, is it like the higher the vector distance, the more similar the values are? That's right, yes. Yeah. So we're going to use cosine similarity, which is a recommended distance metric for Azure OpenAI embeddings. And so the most relevant results will have the highest score, and the least relevant results will have the lowest score. Cool. So we'll run a quick vector search here. And so I have this database. I forgot to mention, I have a container that's full of these uh, products for an Imagine e-retailer, right? And so I could search for show me red phones that maybe are in this e-retailer's database. And I can see the documents that come up, right? There's this um, uh, plush red phone 2000. Uh, I see bright uh, phone ultra red. Uh, so a lot of great options here. Um, and one thing that you'll notice if we actually search through here um, is that not only have I done a vector search, but I'm also using a query filter to help me get the right content, right? Because sometimes vector search is, is really useful and really semantically relevant, but sometimes it just doesn't quite meet the bar. So you notice what I'm doing here is I'm adding a where clause of where it contains c.name red. So I'm looking for a string, a substring in that property name. And again, I can just combine any query filter that I want with this and run it with my vector search. So, um, and it's really simple to execute vector searches that way. So in this notebook, we've also done a couple of other things, right? So we're going to build this really simple chatbot or, or shopping assistant for this e-retailer. Uh, and we can store our chat history in Cosmos DB. Uh, we can also um, uh, orchestrate the, our chat completions with our large language model. And we can also implement a semantic cache to save us time and cost for making LLM uh, 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 calls, API calls, every single time there's a user question. And then we can deploy this in an Azure web app if we want, but we can also have a simple uh, function running here uh, in Gradio. So Gradio is a great uh, package to use for a quick POC. And now we can have this chatbot that I have for my co Cosmic Marketplace demo. And I can say, you know, uh, show me red phones you have in stock. Whoops. You have. Let's try that. Right. So it will go, it will execute the vector search. And again, the vector search and the retrieval is actually really fast. So latency here is because I'm using GPT-4 yeah. and it takes a little while. And because we're doing a live demo. So and the of course, because we're doing like, a live demo and nope. <laughs> we're, gonna... we're not the only ones <laughs> using the internet here at Build. Yeah. But uh, cool, there we go. Now we can see all the options that we have. Let's put it in a nice format. And we're able to take our data stored in Azure Cosmos DB with our vectors stored in Cos Cosmos DB, execute a vector search and connect it to our RAG pipeline for our LLM. That is excellent. I love it. And you came in with an, a minute and 30 seconds to spare, which means we might have some Q&A time. Just All right. like one or two, maybe. So, Mikal, starting with the chat, you got anything over there? Yeah, actually, uh, one interesting question came in. Can I use any of the Azure Cosmos DB SDKs for vector search? Yeah, it's a great question. So today, you can use the Python SDK, our .NET SDK, and the Java SDK soon to be JavaScript SDK, and Go will come a little bit later. Cool. And let's do an in-person one. So hi. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my question is, how would this work if you uh, have a multi-tenant application? How would yeah. this work if you have a multi-tenant? Multi-tenant. Application? Yeah, cool. yeah it's, it's actually a really great question. So Cosmos DB is designed for uh, multi-tenant applications, right? So one thing that you could do is maybe start uh, in serverless. Serverless is great for multi-tenant apps, or maybe you don't have tons of demand for every yeah. single tenant. And then, Cosmos D and then we have a natural progression, a seamless integration, where you can move from uh, 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 our serverless to provision throughput model. And then there's multiple different flavors of dealing with multi-tenancy, everything from isolation on the partition key level, index level, container level, database level, and even resource level. Thank you. All right, great questions, y'all. And that concludes our Q&A. Very short and sweet, but great questions all the same. So if we didn't get to your question, no worries. Where can people go to learn more? 
Yeah, so you can check us out at aka.ms slash cosmosdb discann, or you can come over to the CDA over there and ask me some questions. Great. Well, James, thank you so much. Go check out the booth if you're here in person, and also go check out the website. Yeah. So thanks again. Thanks, Leslie.